airboating. It's been called the lunatic fringe of whitewater kayaking, and its devotees are the daredevils of the sport. For hair boaters, the attraction of taming dangerous whitewater provides an irresistible challenge. To many, hair boaters are adrenaline-crazed adventure seekers looking for an early grave. But to others, they're the heroes and heroines who define the boundaries of a fast-growing and exciting sport. Now, a small number of these hair boaters are stretching the limits on what may be the most treacherous river in North America, the Narrows of the Green. Is this a scary run? It's a, yeah, it's a scary run, sure. Anybody out here that says didn't is uh, lying. Be described as life-threatening. Sure, definitely. You mess up in here, definitely. It's definitely life-threatening. I like being scared, but I like the adrenaline. Located in the picturesque Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina, this seven-mile section of the Upper Green tumbles from the Eastern Continental Divide through a steep and rocky gorge that locals call the Narrows. It is here that our story takes place. From afar, the Narrows look beautiful and benign, but from the cockpit of a small plastic boat, one's perspective changes dramatically. Here, the paddler struggles with fate while being swept down a steeply plunging river that drops over rocks that are often as big as houses. level and feeling comfortable that you're at an expert skill level and accepting the fear that you've got pumping around inside of you and accepting the fact that that's there and dealing with it. Risa Calloway is one of a handful of boaters who are paddling the narrows of the green on a regular basis. You don't want to be afraid and, and be so scared that it, it messes up your performance. Yet if it, if it weren't exciting and you weren't a little bit scared, then we wouldn't be here. Rivers are judged in their difficulty often by the gradient, the amount of 
vertical drop that happens during a, a given horizontal stretch. And this one goes down about 500 feet per mile for about a half a mile. And that is really extreme. Extreme gradient and resulting speed with which the water flows are the most apparent hazards here. The riverbed and the rocks create many more obstacles on this challenging course. Undercut rocks, logs, and overhanging trees are potentially fatal traps for even the most experienced boaters. On a steep technical creek like this, a good boat design can mean the difference in success or failure. Up to now, less than a dozen people have run the entire gorge without portaging any rapids. Tom Visnius of Bryson City, North Carolina, was among the first. That was in November of 88 and I was with a friend of mine, John Kennedy. Just started paddling down. We weren't quite sure what we were getting into, uh, although we had heard stories about how, how steep and difficult it was. rush the feelings that you get running the vertical white water there's not a whole lot you can do when you're uh, in some of the big slides but you feel good going through it and just falling No one has invested more hours honing their skills and confidence on this river than North Carolina veteran kayaker Bob McDonough. The river was first paddled about 10 years ago by some local kayakers. And um, you know, when they first saw the river, they essentially ran a few of the rapids out here, but they ended up walking almost everything else. It's probably the most difficult run people are running right now. The most difficult rapid is the rapid people call it the gorilla or the flume. And that's like a 20-foot drop that drops into a, a six-foot wide channel of the, of the fastest white water you'll ever see in your life. A good day on the green has been described as ecstatic, but a bad day can be a real nightmare. 
Possibly the most important variable on this river is the paddler's good judgment, or lack of it. Courage and caution are carefully balanced as the more difficult rapids are scouted. One paddler's wisdom may be another's folly, and sometimes a decision of portage may be based entirely on sixth sense intuition. Watching a friend in trouble can destroy the confidence of a whole group. And not being able to help only makes matters worse. Mishaps and the resulting injuries are the rule rather than the exception. So why do they do it? What's so compelling about laying one's life on the line? Is it the pursuit of adventure? The thrill? The adrenaline? The gratification of a personal challenge fulfilled? Or is it possible that some people will take this much risk for the sake of fun? The, the adrenaline flow is just, an, I don't know, it's hard to describe how much it's just a, a great feeling. The most fun part is when you're through. <laughs> You've made it. And then you're at the takeout, and that's, the, that's when it's really fun.